you know, I bet you you probably know a lot of people that are gay, and you don't even know it because there's not, you know, sort of things sticking out of their heads. Or, you know. You're and not you a different color. color. I often said, I wish we were a color. You know, like if we could be a color, then yeah. you couldn't hide. No, well, then you'd be prejudiced if, against you know, that color. No one would like that color. Yeah. <laughs> In St. John, New Brunswick, Centenary Queen Square United Church, or CQS, is making waves. In 1999, the congregation decided to leave its historic church site. The cost of maintaining the building was too high, and the congregation wanted to focus its resources on social outreach. They shocked the community when they moved to a modest doorfront space down the street. In 2001, CQS became the first affirming congregation in New Brunswick. I think that there are a lot of members of this community would like the earth to open up and for this congregation to be swallowed up. Okay, come on in. This congregation doesn't allow people to be in denial around justice issues, around sexual justice issues, around economic justice issues, around uh, issues that specifically affect a gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered persons, a whole rainbow gamut. We don't pass the collection plate here at CQS. Um, because we have members of the congregation who aren't able to give financially, they give in other ways. So it's there, and if people want to make a donation, they can. There are a lot of members of the community, both United Church and outside the United Church, that are not comfortable with this congregation. They were always uh, pushing the rest of the Christian church. What does it mean to love your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? Let's get out there and do things. Jim Crooks and Carl Tricky, a gay couple that owns the Mahogany Manor Bed and Breakfast in St. John, unintentionally initiated the affirming process at CQS in 1996. Jim and I went to the congregation wanting to have a covenanting ceremony. When they, when they did present the request to the congregation for their covenanting service, one of the elders said in, in our discussion of that matter, well, why would we not say yes? These are people we know, they are part of us, they're, they're part of our church family. And that led to a discussion about gay issues. The initiating matter is, are we or are we not, can we or can we not be totally welcoming of gays and lesbians in our congregation, in the life of the congregation, and leadership in the congregation. In your name, Lord, I will. When you put faces on humans and you know them as friends, and you can see the face of Jesus within them, then you have no problem working through the process. I have a problem with the fact that we are even having this discussion. Because when I read a sign that, that, that says that it's a church, it's a sanctuary, regardless of what denomination, and, and the words say, all welcome, all are welcome, then I assume from that that that's, that's what God has called us to, to, do, to do and to be. If it's true, then is it just true in words, or is it something that we as a congregation live? Becoming an affirming congregation is a one- or two-year process involving study, discussion, and prayer, leading to the public declaration that all are welcome. Many gay persons have had a strong church background in their upbringing and then when they realize their orientation at some point through their teens or their 20s um, they can only put up with the negativity of congregations uh, of, of other christian congregations so long before they say look enough is enough and they have removed themselves from the church rather than deal with the negativity when we affirm who a person is. We're accepting that the spirit of the Creator, that the wholeness of God that is incarnated in them is good and something to be celebrated. St. John is not only conservative, it's radically conservative. St. John is a reactionary city, not just conservative. So we go hard over into reaction. And that's tough to deal with. There aren't a lot of people of color. There's not a lot of change that has happened here. I think there's a real core of goodness and loving kindness here. But I think there's also um, a tendency for let's buy into our own little world and let's not see the bigger world that is out there. <laughs> this is a congregation that really lives out its gospel faith. It's a congregation that has put its money where its mouth is. It's a congregation that has made a public declaration 
of what it believes to be theological inclusivity. There aren't many storefront ministries, so I guess in that sense it's unusual. What makes it very usual or congruent with this congregation is they were committed to staying in the uptown area of St. John. They were committed to issues around uh, economic justice. And this is a really important message that the church is not the space, it's not the building, it's the people. It's really friendly. It, it doesn't have all that austere and, and high vaulted ceilings and stained glass. The overhead expenses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the money yeah. that we don't use to maintain that building now goes to people. It goes to all the things that it should go to rather than the heating bill and the roof, the leaks and, you know, all those kinds of things. I, I just find at our church we can open our arms, give everyone a hug, try to be reassuring and, and loving one another. And to me, that's Christianity in itself. This was the first church that we actually became involved in, and we became involved with them as a couple because we felt that they were welcoming us as a couple, not as two women coming to church, but as another family. This congregation will celebrate at the drop of a hat. Yeah, um, after church. Yeah, it's Sunday, let's have a party. <laughs> it's sunny out, let's have a potluck. <laughs> Our kids are 11 and 8. We've been to a bunch of same-sex marriages, and they'll have a perspective that, uh, you know, that we wouldn't have had, say, when we were growing up. I know one thing that our children take away from attending worship here is that there is a place for everybody. Becoming an affirming congregation is not a place that one lands on, but it's a process. It's not a geographical space we enter into, it's a theological journey that we take together. Oh, we're so lucky that Don's here. I really think that uh, he is a very generous person. He has um, a great knowledge and a spiritual depth that is um, just what our congregation needs for leadership. One of the biggest things that we encountered was that there were some people in the congregation who were really very worried that we were going to um, be harassed physically and verbally and that we were going to be isolated from the rest of the community. One or two persons felt it was their right uh, or their duty to, uh, to harass, to uh, try to eliminate, to make life as difficult as possible, and to the point where uh, we had taken court action and, and uh, three times, in fact, uh, took him to court and, and got convictions. Somehow there's an acceptance uh, in certain parts of our society where it's okay um, because, oh, I'm really uncomfortable with gay and lesbian people, it's okay for me to go and get a baseball bat and try and beat their brains out. I think the lesson of CQS is that you can go through so many changes and still have the core of what you are as a church community uh, remain intact. Make sure that you take a year and a half or two years concentrate on what you're doing, work through it yourself, and work through it as a congregation. They should understand if they take that time and in good faith come to the conclusion that they can't go ahead with the designation of being an affirming ministry with a public statement, they haven't, they haven't wasted time. Change is, doesn't mean an end. It just means a new direction. We can either hammer in the nails or we can roll away the stone. Those are the options as followers of Jesus. I don't want to hammer in nails. I want to be there to roll away the stone, to, to bring life, to give life, to be life, to share in the life that is given to us.